Well, hello and welcome to the Otana Today Show, your community connection since 1991. Today is Friday, the 10th of November of 2017. My name is Pete Connor. I am your show's host. For uh, we got a lot of bread and butter stuff this whole week, haven't we? We're going to talk today with Julie Anderson and Michael Furch, talk about transitional housing of Steele County. Michael, a community member, here to support uh, transitional housing and its efforts to to do the good work that it does. And Julie is going to help us to know more about that. And then we'll be on location with Lori Running from Steele County Advocates for De of Develop or for Developmental Disabilities, who will be talking about the Festival of the Trees. We'd like to also, at this time, welcome back a couple of sponsors. Um, Advocates for Developmental Disabilities is coming back as well as Anytime Fitness, and we're saying welcome back. We're glad to have you among the fold. Normally on Friday, and today is not going to be abnormal. We are going to also highlight uh, all of the sponsors that we have for Oatana today. Our premier sponsors, Advocates for Developmental Disabilities, the City of Oatana and Oatana Public Utilities, our primary sponsors, Amy Swain Hearing Centers, Anytime Fitness, Little Theater of Oatana and Oatana Foundation, and our interlude sponsors, Bremer Bank, Brenda Bednar Mortgage Office, Cedar Valley Services, Carlson Branston and Company CPAs, ERA Gillespie Realty, Fairview Animal Medical Center, Horizon Eye Care, Oatana Area Business Development Center, the Steele County Historical Society, the Steele County Transitional Housing, the Third Hand Video Productions, Trium Graphics, and TPS Insurance. These are the people that help us to keep Owatonna today in your living room or wherever it is that you're watching it. Uh, we hope you support them. And if you see them around or stop in at a place of business uh, of a sponsor, tell them thanks for, for doing that. And if you have anybody that you think would be a good sponsor, why don't you let us know. Give Leanne a call at 390-5751. And now we're going to take a break for those sponsor messages, and then we'll be right back with... Michael and Julie, stay with us. Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Hi, I'm Betsy Linger from the Oatana Foundation. Your generosity has made Oatana a better place to live by benefiting our community, the arts, recreation, and education. Please consider a donation today. The Owatonna Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Kick off your holiday season with Advocates for Developmental Disabilities, 27th Annual Festival of Trees, Friday, November 17th at 7.30 p.m. at the Owatonna Holiday Inn. The gala is a festive evening of sparkling trees, holiday entertainment, silent auction, delectable hors d'oeuvres and desserts, and specially decorated fresh wreaths. Tickets are available at Cashwise, Hy-Vee, Katkeys, or by calling 451-9769. Put some Mary in your holidays by attending Ed's opening night event, Friday, November 17th. Hope to see you there. Welcome back to the Otana Today Show, your community connection, and a big welcome to Michael Fritch and Julie. Thank you from for down the us. hall. You bet, you bet. Nice to have you guys. Thank you. Really, I'm going to talk about uh, that very important. Uh, um, I don't know. Do we call it a business? Yes. Uh, Community-based organization mm -hmm. called uh, Steel County Transitional yes. Housing. How yes. important uh, it is, and we're going to find out more about that. Thank and you, Michael. You're going to highlight an event that's coming up forward that you guys are sponsoring to support the the effort. So, um, first, uh, transitional housing. Uh, yes. This thing with homelessness. Yes. You know, I think still there might be a, some people that don't recognize that we have in this community. You know, in Steel County, mm -hmm. homeless people. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know. Yes, yes. We see it every day, and I know you do too, yeah, Pete, and yeah. in the advocacy that you've done. Yeah. Uh, we see it every day, people who are living in their cars, people with families, people who are working but struggling mm -hmm. to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest misperceptions is that homeless people don't work, mm -hmm. and many of the people that we see are working people, mm -hmm. but their wages have remained stagnant even mm -hmm. though the costs of rent have mm -hmm. gone up. Mm -hmm. So it's people who are already homeless or people who are at risk 
for homelessness, very much rent burden that we're seeing. And very often it's under the radar. People want to hide their homelessness because they're afraid that child protection is going to get involved. They'll tell their kids to wash up, you know, at the gas station or Walmart before going to school. They'll tell them not to report it. Uh, so we're finding a number of people that are just under the radar, and it's been that way for a while. The good thing, though, is that homelessness is often only a temporary condition mm -hmm. if we have the stopgap programs in place like transitional housing. Right. Yeah. So the, the, the time in place for transitional housing has been how many years now? We've actually been in operation for 17 years. 17. Since 2000, we were incorporated as a 501c3 nonprofit mm -hmm. in the year 2000. It was a group of pastors mm -hmm. and social workers and other concerned citizens who came together and started the organization, and we've been going strong ever since. Yeah. You know, and there's always the you know hope, and and, and when, when Michael gets to talk about the the event, uh, the word hope is big on that. Is uh, the, this we're going to get we're going to get we're going to see the end of this. Oh. We're going to see hope. We hope for that. Absolutely. But then then this practical thing comes. Mm -hmm. You know, and here mm -hmm. we are talking right. about it again. Right, right, right. Yes, it's a cycle, and it, what we're finding is that people, if they have the stopgap measures in place, like they are able to get the temporary um, condition resolved, uh, their emergency crisis, and they're able to get housed, and then on top of that, have a program like transitional housing, where in our case we provide case mm -hmm. management and we provide ongoing rental assistance mm -hmm. according. To income so the client is also paying part of their sure. rent directly to the landlord and sure. increasingly paying more on a graduated mm -hmm. level and so right. by the time they finish in our program they just transition in place they stay where mm -hmm. they are they continue to pay on their rent mm -hmm. they pay the whole amount and they become self-sufficient we require that people work and go to school or work or go to school a lot mm -hmm. of times they'll choose one or the other mm -hmm. but what we find is that people become stronger in our program and self-sufficient so that even though the conditions in the community might still be difficult they can usually manage that. So more often than not, we find that homelessness can really be a temporary condition mm -hmm. if we have those programs in place. Sure. Otherwise, then, then they it, cycle. It, it cycle yeah. mm -hmm. Let's talk about success yes. rates, if oh, you will. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We follow people six months after they graduate from the program. So every time, every month, we will call and follow up and, and see how people are doing. Mm -hmm. And in 95% of the cases, people are still housed and working. Mm -hmm and paying their rent on time six months out after they're finished with sure, the program. Sure. So the results are just phenomenal. We've sure. had people who were living in their cars. We have a young lady who was living in her car because she was fleeing domestic violence. Uh, and three years later now, she has a master's degree and is a counselor at the University of Maryland. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just an unbelievable success rate. Mm -hmm. And the anecdotes, you know, the stories that we have, um, are just phenomenal. People that have been incredibly successful, uh, many people in turning their lives around. And it, it's the kind of thing where if you were to go see a movie about yeah. it, you would say, well, that could never really happen. Yeah. Yeah. But it happens. Yeah. It just, it happens. When people are given the opportunity, they will usually rise to the occasion. And it's a phenomenal thing, especially in cases where people are fleeing, for example, domestic violence. Yeah. And they're able to go back to working on their goals and they become very successful. Yeah. Years ago, I, you know, I've been told that, you know, at one time, 200 to 300 people. And I says, well, that was for like a year, right? And, and it was Pastor Scott Englehart. He said, no, right daily. Mm-hmm, daily. Boy, talk right. about an eye-opener. Very yeah, much. About, and here, you know, because we, have, we always thought that. Right here in Steel County. Here. Yeah. But collaborative efforts with trans, Steel County Transitional Housing with other organizations, because you mentioned some things, domestic violence, you, you mentioned some yes. things you know, that play into that. Yes. So you're, you must be doing some collaboration. We, we are. We're working very closely with the Crisis Resource Center, mm -hmm. and the Crisis Resource Center is a partner in a grant program that we have mm -hmm. called HOPE. And this program works with people who are fleeing domestic violence. We provide first month's rent and damage deposit. Mm -hmm. We also provide ongoing rental subsidy case management and advocacy. We contract with the Crisis Resource Center to provide advocacy. So they will work with the people who are facing abuse in their homes. Once they're in a, an apartment that we subsidize, mm -hmm. they'll work with them in their homes and they'll provide case management, but also safety planning mm -hmm. and making sure that people are able to get an order for protection if they mm -hmm. need one. Mm -hmm. um, the other collaboration that we have is with Fraser Recovery Homes. Oh, okay. We have a home um, located here in the community, uh, Cedar, and it's uh, called Stacy's Place for people who are fleeing or actually have left um, mm -hmm. uh, prison, for example, or have been in treatment, mm -hmm. women in recovery. We talk about homes and facilities. Um, obviously, you have, you have the need, you know, apartments, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever is needed by 
the client or the clients and his or her family. Right. Where, where, where do you find places? Absolutely. We work with uh, basically what we call scattered site leasing. So mm -hmm. landlords in the community, private landlords very often, or landlord uh, bigger companies that will work with us. And we, we simply uh, work with anybody who is mm -hmm. willing to um, partner with us. Mm -hmm. There are landlords that are very strict about criminal history or mm -hmm. about uh, evictions, and that's understandable. There are others that are a little bit more flexible. So we really need to have a variety of landlords, and there's nobody that we will not work with. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have a, a very good, um, solid relationship with the uh, City of Owatonna Landlord Association. Okay. We're very positive about that. They've yeah. been wonderful to work with, and we've just had a great list of landlords that we work with. Um, so if anybody's interested in, mm -hmm. in partnering with us and in becoming a landlord uh, with our agency, we would encourage people to give us a call. Is that to say then that you have <coughs> no waiting list? We have a significant waiting ah. list. I, I must be honest about that. Ah. Our waiting list is six months to one year mm -hmm. long and it has to do with funding. Mm -hmm. um, there, there are some, some challenges sometimes finding apartments but mm -hmm. as a whole the, the challenge is that we need the funding and so mm -hmm. even though we receive funding from private donors and we're very blessed to have a yeah. partnership with United Way and we're very blessed to have a partnership with fe federal agencies, right. we don't have the funds to serve everybody on the waiting list. Yeah. So it is a six month to one year long okay. waiting list. We talk about funding, we've got to go to Michael. You've been sitting there very patiently <laughs> <laughs> waiting. Uh, uh, a community member, you know, doing this, um, tell us about this event, your personal almost event that you're, you're putting out to help transitional housing. Sure, this, this is our fourth annual event. Uh, it was created really back four years ago when my wife Tammy mm -hmm. said, you know, we've, we've amassed this repertoire of music mm -hmm. that we really found to be very uplifting and positive. Yeah. And it would be great to do a concert, do that music, mm -hmm. and entertain people while we do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, can we raise some money mm -hmm. and put that into the hands of someone that can use it? Sure. So this will be the fourth year that we've done this, and we found that transitional housing was a very worthy recipient mm -hmm. of those funds. Julie just said, there's federal funding, there's United Way funding, but there's a waiting list. Yeah. So we decided that we would channel that money to transitional housing. Uh, we're really killing three birds with one stone. We're providing a, a great evening of entertainment that people will not walk away from uh, having really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. We're raising some money for transitional housing and almost as importantly, raising awareness yeah. of the need yeah. for uh, for what this organization does right here in Owatonna. And this is absolutely <clears throat> voluntary on your part. It has nothing to do with the fabric of the objectives or the mission of, of board, board of director work. It's all upon your shoulders, your wife's shoulders, and others who are going to participate. Right. We, uh, we are very fortunate. Uh, we've been blessed in our lives with good careers, and we've been able to provide the basics, food, shelter, and clothing. But there are people who, who struggle with that. Yeah. Um, we're fortunate to have friends that are musicians, yeah. and uh, you'll see some familiar faces. You'll f see some folks from Hot and Bothered, if you've been to the Hometown Sampler, or the Bad Tangerines, or Trinity Lutheran Church. We've got kids' choirs yeah. that are going to come in and help us with one number. Yeah. Um, David Dow, who's a chiropractor in town, uh, Oatana boy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of folks that you'll see and you'll recognize, and some songs that you'll recognize. I don't think anybody will leave not having recognized at least a few of the songs. Good. Give us, before we close, uh, the date yes. and the time. It's a week from tomorrow night, right. Saturday, November 18th, right. 7 o'clock at the Oatana High School Auditorium. Tickets? There are no tickets. It's a free will offering. Free will offering. Yep, and I want to give well. everybody just a little sneak preview. <laughs> Ordinarily, you would come in and give your contribution. Yeah. We're going to ask them to hold that for a little bit until intermission. We have a special event that will take uh, place. So, Secrets. Yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. Well, it's a great event, and it's for a great cause. And thank you so much, both of you, for being thank Julie, you. to share all of that with you and Michael for your good work. And um, so uh, all the best, and uh, we look forward to the event, and see you around. Thank, thank you, you. Okay, so and Thank much. you for being with us as well. Uh, today we're going to now take a break for some sponsor messages, and then we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome to Bremer Bank. I am Jason Eiberg. And I am Shannon Pedersen. Bremer is a full financial services bank. We invite you to stop by Bremer Bank and experience the Bremer difference. You, you are, are always, always welcome, welcome at Bremer. What you 
say, a voice you can talk to. We're growing with you. With you in mind in everything we do. Oh, a ton of public utilities. Since 1988, the Owatonna Area Business Development Center has been the part of the success of many area businesses. The center leases office space and manufacturing space and offers on-site business consulting. The Owatonna Area Business Development Center is in business to help your business be a success. Hi, this is Eric with the West Hills Tennis and Fitness Center. A heated swimming pool, sauna, running track, cardio room, basketball court, weight room, and six tennis courts are among the amenities you can enjoy at our facility. We have a variety of membership packages available to meet the needs of everyone, or you can simply drop in for the day. Stop out today and take advantage of all we have to offer. West Hills Tennis and Fitness, encouraging and promoting a healthy lifestyle. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show Your Community Connection. I am here at the offices of Advocates for Developmental Disabilities with Executive Director Lori Running. Hi Lori, welcome to the Owatonna Today Show. Well, hello. Thank you very much for having me. Actually, kind of welcome back because we do this, oh, for the past 27 years on a yearly basis. <laughs> I know. <laughs> And you're right, 27 years is exactly right, yeah. Exactly. So we're here today to talk about your Festival of Trees, which mm -hmm. is the major fundraiser for Advocates for Developmental Disabilities. Right. So before we start with that, um, let's find out more about what your agency does. Sure, um, and that's always the important part because obviously you're not going to do a fundraiser if you don't do anything important, right? <laughs> um, so we serve individuals of all ages, and that's something important to know right there, um, that have some type of developmental disability, which is somebody that is mentally um, challenged, physically challenged, or that combination of both. Okay. And that's something, too, that a lot of people don't understand. You know, mm -hmm. I think they just think it's maybe someone mentally challenged. And and it's not so it can be that combination and as I said all ages birth all the way on up um, and we offer many many different programs and services some of them uh, that are probably more known to people is our cool kids on the block which mm -hmm. is our disability awareness program and also the bullying prevention program that we do in the schools and we do it to kindergarten and third grade is the disability awareness part and then second grade and fourth grade is the bullying prevention part of it. Okay, uh, the, the, the bullying, how kids, t uh, tell me what that's all about. Yeah, and so it still with our puppets, and we do puppet skits um, about it, and what it is is the, the skits are um, where we have a bully. One of the, the puppets is actually mm. a bully, okay. and, then, um, and then, of course, one is, as we say, it's always the victim or the target, mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then the other puppets are there, you know, witnessing it. And so we bring in all of those words, and then afterwards we talk to the kids, you know, who, who was the bully and why did he maybe bully in one of the cases it's Marcus and Marcus is wearing hearing aids mm -hmm. well because Marcus was an easy one to pick on you know or um, why did the other puppets follow um, that bully and we kind of talked to about sometimes you know the other kids are kind of scared of that bully so they think it's easier if they just stick with the bully even though they know it's not right mm -hmm. so we bring up a lot of different you know types of scenarios and again depending if it's for the second graders or the fourth graders mm -hmm what all we talk about. Um, and then do you give them action to take if they themselves should be bullied oh, some ideas? Yes, absolutely. I'm glad you bring that up. Absolutely we do. Um, what they should do, who should they talk to, um, and one of the skits, it's, it's cute, the one where Marcus is picked on, um, I'm just thinking of that one with mm -hmm. his hearing aids, um, he yells, ice cream, ice cream, and then some of the other puppets come in and, oh, ice cream, where is it? And then Marcus is like, oh no, I'm sorry. I don't really have ice cream, but you know, Kirby here is picking on me. So it's a word that he has used just to get some friends to come help him. Oh. So we say, you know, like a code word. Yeah, or a safe word, you know, and of course mm -hmm. you can just yell, help, I like you that know. Better. Right, but um, in this case, because the kids, of course, enjoy that, you know, oh, ice cream. But we talk about why did he use that word. Um, we 
we also talk about um, what should the kids do if it's really kind of a fight and they are afraid, even though they're the witness, they're afraid to get into that fight. Mm -hmm. Do they just walk away then and forget about it? And of course they shouldn't. But, you know, again, what should they do? Uh, we talk about does bullying just happen at school? And absolutely it doesn't. It happens everywhere and anywhere. And does it just happen with kids? And we say, oh no, bullying can happen to you and me. Mm. You know, it happens at the workplace. Um, some kids even know, you know, boy, I know my mom or dad's been bullied. So, you know, we talk about a lot of different things. And then they also have what we call learning stations. And, and those stations are a little bit different than the disability awareness stations where maybe they have a chance to be in a wheelchair or something like that. But these stations are more um, like we do a respect sheet and the main thing is you respect everyone and mm. so it's working on the words respect right. or they they pull out a, um, a we call it a bullying stick and they pull out a stick and they're given a little scenario and what would you do in this case mm. and that's for fourth graders and then they have to say what they think they would do mm -hmm. so um, the teachers have been so so pleased with um, this right. program like I said we are here in Otana built right into their health curriculum and um, um, for those two grades, but Blooming Prairie has us come every year as well for those grades. So great. it's been wonderful. It's been a great program. It sounds like a wonderful program. Yeah, it and really great is. Teaching and learning experience. Yep, it is. And again, you know, when you have puppets, you know, that are cool, cool kids, <laughs> um, the kids really listen. They really okay. do. It's not just us up there lecturing. Uh, we have Sib Shop, a sibling support program for the brother or sister that has a disability, mm -hmm. as um, I can speak for me personally. Oh, yes. Because of our oldest daughter, Natalie, yeah. with um, right. very severe disabilities. Um, our other two kids growing up, you know, sometimes even though Brad and I didn't think they were being left out, they were being left they out. They felt that way. Yeah, sure. they did. Because obviously the attention went they more felt it was going more yeah and Natalie. sometimes it did have to go to Natalie but um, you know we we didn't think we were slighting them but Sib Shop really helped them to understand other kids had those same kinds mm. of feelings okay yeah Wonderful. all right well now let's get on to the festival of trees yes as I said this is your 27th yes year. it is and, and it is. tell us the date time and place sure it's November 17th it's open to the public starting at 7 30 of course you have to purchase tickets it's not free but mm -hmm. you know purchasing tickets for $30 and it'll be at the Owatonna Holiday Inn okay and you've had it at the Holiday Inn for many many we months. have yes we've kind of have you know floated around you know starting at the beginning at the uh, mall and uh, we have been a lot of places but right we've been at the Otana Holiday Inn now for quite a few years. Okay for yeah. so for the admission ticket then what will they see? Right they will um, first they'll see 50 beautifully decorated trees. 50. Oh. And yes I know we're so excited um, and you know beautifully decorated uniquely decorated mm -hmm. um, they will have fantastic hors d'oeuvres we are really really excited about their hors d'oeuvres this year Darren who is um the chef out there, he is going to surprise all of us, oh. including us. Okay. He is coming up with the whole plan, so we are really, really blessed and very so excited. You put it all in Darren's. We hands, have, huh? so Darren, yeah. Don't disappoint. No, that's right. I said maybe just so we don't have squid, but you know what? Squid's <laughs> good too. So well, we'll see. It we'll could see. be great. Um, and then a cash bar, of course. Mm -hmm. And then we will have um, a silent auction, as you guys can see here. Hopefully, um, just. You know, a, you're really famous for your silent. Uh, auction we business. we yeah, are. You know, I know a lot of nonprofits. And and I know they all have great silent auctions, don't get me wrong, but I think we are probably, hopefully, the most known for it. I think so. Because we have awesome, awesome baskets, and it's right before the holidays. Mm -hmm. So people walk out going, oh my gosh, I have my Christmas shopping done, or I've gotten everything for my grandchildren. So um, just, right. so, you know, again, the community just, boy, really, really comes comes to the spirit of us for our baskets. It so, really is. Yep, so we'll have over 100 baskets. We already know that. Oh, um, I know, great. I know. And then um, we are going to have Ryan Gillespie this year is going to be doing um, holiday entertainment for us. And we have not had holiday oh, entertainment for a while, great. so that's great. We'll have a wall of wine. Mm -hmm. And we are going to have what we call, um, well, it's um, spin the bottle. But don't worry, it's spin the bottle. <laughs> I know, spin the bottle for beer. And it's going to be oh. craft beer. And so that'll be kind of in conjunction with our wall of wine. And where are you getting your craft beer from? Um, we are asking different 
different people that make it oh, and locally. different yep and um, different crafters to donate so um, that should be another really fun thing and it will be with a um, what do I want to say a, a spin the wheel oh, type okay. thing so it's gonna be a fun a fun game is what we're gonna do with it so we thought that'd so be kind like of a, a cute wheel name of fortune yes world. that's okay. exactly right yeah okay. so um, lots of fun different things so people will be involved besides again just wandering around and getting to see all these yeah. really really neat beautiful trees good how much do you hope to be able to raise because this is your major fundraiser it, and this is how you fund what you do it is this is is how we fund what we do hoping at least to make hopefully thirty two thirty three thousand okay. dollars would be wonderful yeah great yeah great so again give us the date time and place right so it is november 17th 7 30 at the Oatana holiday inn um, you can purchase tickets at Kotke's, High V, Cash Wise. You can purchase them at the door that night. We do get called on that. Okay. We love it if you buy them ahead of time, but you can purchase them well, that you night. You have a better idea of how many or Right, exactly, because we do have to, you know, give him some kind of number, so that helps. Right, and um, and as we say, it's just a wonderful, wonderful way to kick off the holiday season. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And if you're unable to make it that evening because of prior commitments, mm -hmm. I'm sure that you will always accept donations. Oh, yes. Donations, donations are they are. You know what? The donations, no matter how small, are just as important. So we really, really love those donations. And if they can't make it that night also, they'll be on display through that following Saturday. Well, the trees will be. Yes, the trees will be. So, And, you know, we have a donation box out there, so certainly people can do donations that oh, way perfect. as well. Perfect. And just, you know, get out there to enjoy the trees and see the right. people that have supported us by purchasing trees and decorating the trees. And then the following Thursday is actually Thanksgiving. Yes. And I know a lot of people have made it their Thanksgiving tradition after their meal to go out to the Holiday Inn and browse through the, through the trees sometime yep. over that that Thanksgiving. And you know what? I'm amazed because a lot of times we're gone, but um, we talk to the Holiday Inn and they say, oh, you would not believe how many people come out. <laughs> You're right. You know what? They they go out there. It's a family, like you said, um, event. And then, you know, they've walked it off a little bit, their food, and then they go back for dessert. <laughs> and so, they go back for dessert. Yeah, perfect. so perfect. it's perfect. And right. to take your pictures out there, too. You know, Christmas card pictures. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Lori, we look so forward to the 27th Annual Festival of Trees on Friday. November 17th, and it starts at what time again? 7.30. 7.30. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. And audience, please stay with us. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Cedar Valley Services, located at the corner of Rose and Grove in Owatonna, provides an array of services for people with disabilities in Steele County. CVS thanks the entire community, especially our business customers, for supporting us in Owatonna for 43 years. Thank you from CVS. Welcome back to the Otana Today Show, your community connection. We have time for one announcement, and that is the St. Paul's Episcopal Church Annual Bazaar, Saturday, November 11th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., with a brunch being served from 10.30 to 12.30, a cost of $7. That's going to do it for today. Uh, thanks for being with us, and I uh, hope you've had a great week. We will have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday when we will have Diane Sundewall to tell us about the upcoming Iris Infants Remembered in Silence Turkey Trot and Luann Kopa from Eat Well Nutrition Therapy and Diabetes Awareness. Thanks again for being with us. Hope you have a great weekend. See you on Monday.